Hello everyone and welcome to another Lens Studio tutorial. In this video we are going to be focusing on the scripting aspect in Lens Studio. So the great thing about using scripting in Lens Studio is that you can extend the functionality of the software a lot and really customize your experience. The first thing we're going to do to create a script is go to the resources, click add new, and click script. And when you click on that, you're going to see it's just an empty text file here with the comment JS code. I know it's a comment because there's two backslashes here. You can tell if I'm typing something, it kind of has white text, but then as soon as you put two backslashes in front of it, it grays it out. So this means that the code is going to ignore the comments and it's going to execute every other line except for those. And the way that JavaScript works is that it executes everything line by line. So the first thing we want to do is learn how to print to the logger. And the logger is right down here. So in order to print something, you just have to type print. And then you have to put parentheses like this. And then you have to put whatever you want inside the parentheses. And you have to make sure that you have quotes inside so that it recognizes it as a string. And a string is just a line of text. So let's print hello world. And then at the very end of this command, we need to tell it that we're done with that command with a semicolon. So you're going to do that after every single command line. We're going to end it with a semicolon, and that lets it know that it's ready to execute. So if we click Apply Changes, nothing's going to happen because we haven't added this script to the scene. So let's add an empty object and let's attach that script to the object. And you can do this two ways, by dragging it inside the inspector with the object selected, or you can add a component when you have the object selected. So you, in the inspector, go down to Add Component, Script, and then where it says Add Script, you click that and you choose your script. So now, once we select it, it prints Hello World in the logger. Okay, so that's perfect. And you can print a lot of other things other than just a string of text. You can print variables, and the way that you declare variables is with var. So that's just a shortened variable. So you just that means that anything following is going to be the name of the variable. So we're going to call this text. And then you have to set the text equal to something so that it knows what's in that text. You can also just end the command right there and just declare an empty variable named text so it doesn't really know what the variable is but it's there but if we wanted to specify it so let's say we wanted to have the text say hello world and then we're going to end that command with semicolon and then instead of printing this string we're going to print the variable text and let's see what happens so now it's printing hello world again, but instead of us putting the hello world inside here, we are putting it right here. And now you can also print other things. Let's say we want to print a number. So instead of text, we're going to name it print the variable number. And let's just put the number 55. So if we try this, it's not going to work. And it's saying identifier text undefined and this is because when you're printing variables that are not strings inside here you need to first add a string inside the print parentheses this just tells the software that you're printing a string basically so you do so you just put empty quotations and then the plus sign meaning you're adding something after that and that's going to be the text so now oh actually no we need to change that to number so now we're printing an empty string plus the number variable, which is 55. And now you see it shows up right there. So now we're going to get into events. And events are how we determine when we're going to fire this. Right now, if we look here, this script is set to initialized. And that means it's basically when this lens starts. As soon as it starts, it's going to do that. So every time we reset the lens, it's going to keep printing that. But if we change the event here, let's change it to tapped. 
So now every time you tap on the screen, it's going to print that again because it's going to call it in that tap event. Let's try another one. Let's do a frame updated. This means it's going to call every single frame. So when I tap this, it's just going to constantly be printing this over and over and over again. This is something that you want to do if you want to change something over time. That's when you're going to want to use the frame updated event. So now let's do something with some objects inside the scene because ultimately what we're going to want to do with these scripts is we're going to want to have it interact with objects inside the scene. So let's start just by creating a billboard here. And then in the sprite that it attaches, I'm just going to call this Ralphie. And then we're going to add a photo here. And that is just a beautiful dog named Ralphie. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to reference this image in the script here. And the way to do that is when you go in the script, where you go up to where the comments are, you always want to make sure that this is at the very top. You're going to start off like you're going to make a comment with the two backslashes, and then you're going to put the at symbol, and then type input. And then this is going to tell the script that it wants to take an object in from the scene. So once you do that, you need to specify what type of object we're taking in the scene. Right now, we're just going to do the standard scene object, and that is typed all with one word and with the S and the O capitalized. So you have to make sure that it's case sensitive and that it has the correct capitalization, otherwise it won't recognize it. So once you've specified scene objects, now we're going to name that scene object. Now I'm just going to call it dog. So once we apply this change and we go back to the scene object, you'll see in the script it's added the ability to put in a scene object. So let's go here and let's find that Ralphie sprite and let's add it in here. So now we can reference this image inside the script. So now what we can do to reference that is type script.dog or whatever you name your inputted object. So we'll do script.dog. So what do we want to do with this? Um, I guess the first thing that usually you would want to do with something via script is to enable it or disable it. And to do that, all you have to simply do is type in dot enabled. And then you have to set equal. So enabled is a Boolean expression. And what a Boolean expression means is it's either true or false. It's nothing else but that. So if it's true, then script.dog would be enabled. But we want to disable it so it would be false. So basically what we're saying here is we're, f we're referencing the script and the dog name and then we're going to set enabled to false. So once we apply this, it's going to disable. But let's say we want to change it so that every time we tap it, it'll alternate between enabling and disabling. So to start, let's just make it set to false initially. This is going to be when it's initialized because it's set to initialized. So we're going to need to create a separate tap event inside the script. So let's delete these. And to do that, we're going to go into the Lens Studio website. And we're going to reference the API here. If you want to go through this route, you can go here and search for what you need. In our case, it's going to be events. And we're going to want to look for the tap event. So every time somebody taps something. And if you'd like, you can read about all of the different methods and properties that you can use. But if you scroll to the bottom, it'll show you an example of the events. So all you really need to do is copy this function in this code snippet. And then paste it in your script in Lens Studio. And then what's going to happen here is it's going to print something every time you tap it. And if we look at what they're printing, it's printing the string tap position and then after that it has event data dot get tap position dot x so what that means is it's taking the tap that you put and it's printing out the position in the screen well the, it's printing the x position in the screen and then it's going to print a comma and then it's going to print the y position in the, so we don't need to reference that right now so we can just delete that but what we do want to happen is once we tap it, we want it to be enabled. So we can do script.dog.enabled, but this time it's going to be true. So now when it's initialized, 
it's going to be set to false and it's going to disable. But now, once we tap it, it's going to be enabled. And if we keep tapping, it's going to keep on enabling again. And let's try and make it so that when we tap it, it'll alternate between being enabled or disabled. And to do that, we are going to use an if statement inside this tap event. So we're going to basically say, if the dog image is enabled, we're going to want to disable it. And then if it's disabled, we're going to want to enable it. So let's delete this for now so that we can create the if statement. And to do that, you type if, and then you put parentheses, and inside the parentheses is the condition that you want to check for. So in this case, we are going to want to type scripts.dog.enabled. So now it's going to say if the dog is enabled, if the image is enabled, then this is when we're going to want to disable it. So now we have the condition, and now we need to put these brackets on the inside, and that means that everything inside these brackets is going to happen if this condition is true. And we could type in the condition enabled equals true, but this is a short way if you just type the if you just type this it's going to mean it's enabled and if you want to check if it's false then all you need to do is add an exclamation point before everything else so this means if this condition is false so now if this image is disabled because if script.dog.enabled is false then now we're going to want to enable it so script.dog dot enabled equals true. So now we need to create the condition if script.dog is enabled. And the way that we can do that, especially because this is a boolean expression, a true or false expression, you can type else, which means basically anything else. So if this is not true. So we do else, and then we put those brackets again to make sure that everything happens inside that. So script.dog.enabled equals false. So now it's going to say if this is disabled, it's going to enable it. Otherwise, it's going to disable it. So now if we apply that and we tap, it's enabled, disabled, enabled, disabled. So now this is a way that you can kind of switch between two states. But let's say we want to switch between multiple images instead of just enabling and disabling. So let's add a new image in here. Well, let's add a couple images. Hmm. Got that one and nice apple here. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to change the texture of this sprite. And in order to do that, we need to go into the API. So if we search Sprite and we click on Sprite in the guides, we're going to look down here and read about it. And what we're looking for is base text. And this means the texture assigned to the Sprite. So we're going to want to change the base text to another texture. And the first thing we're going to need to do then is we're going to need to input those textures in the script. So let's look up texture. And we'll click on that. And it's just asset.texture is what we need to type in the script. So we're going to go back to Lens Studio and we're going to input those textures. And what we're going to do is we're going to input them as an array so that we could keep adding more if we wanted to in the future. So we're going to do backslash backslash at input asset dot texture and then in order to create an array you need to put in two square brackets so that tells the script that you're going to be adding an array and we're going to call this pictures or just pics so once we apply this and we go to the scene object we can see it started an array called pics so we're going to add a value here and we're going to add the texture the first one, we're going to add another one, and then we're going to add an apple. There we go. So now we have all three of those textures. And what we want to do now is have it cycle through those textures every time we tap it. So let's delete the enabled and disabled part. We'll also delete this part in here so that it's just enabled by default. 
So now what we want to do is we have we have these textures set, so we want to first set it to the value zero texture, which is this first one. So we're going to do this outside of the tapped event because we want this to happen when the script is initialized, when it starts. And actually, in order to reference the sprite visual, we're going to need to change this to the sprite visual component. So we need to specify it as a component dot sprite visual. And this is also going to be case sensitive, so capital S, capital V. So now when we apply changes, we're probably going to need to reselect that because it's now a sprite instead of a scene object. Okay. Now we're going to reference that sprite visual by typing script dot dog dot main pass. And the main pass means it's getting, essentially it's going to allow us to reference the texture. So we're going to type dog dot main pass, remember to keep it case sensitive and then dot base text. This is just short for the base texture. And that's if we look in the sprite, this texture right here. So we're gonna be changing this. So let's go back to that. And we're gonna set that equal to the pix array. So it's going to be pix, oops, script dot pix. And it's going to be the first one, which is zero. Now you'll see nothing happens, but that's because this was already set to the first one. So just to test it out, let's set it to the second one, which is actually one. Now you'll see it changes. Okay, so now we know this works, so let's set it back to the first one by default when it initializes. And then in the tap here, we're going to need to cycle through those. So the way to do that is we're going to need to increment a value every time it taps. So let's create a variable here that'll be our count, basically. We're gonna call this var count. And we're gonna set it equal to zero initially. So now we just have a variable that we can reference inside here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to want to increment that count by one every time we tap it. And in order to do that, you could say basically count equals count plus one. And that would do what we need. Let's try printing it out to show you. So print the empty string to make sure that it prints correctly. And then plus count. And then let's copy that and make it happen initially as well so that we can see that it's set to zero right away. We'll clear this and we'll click apply. So now it says zero, but every time we tap, it's going to increment it by one. An easier way to do this, and so that you don't have to type that out so much, is you just type plus plus. This is basically a short way of saying increment by one. So just to show you, we'll apply, count zero, one, two, three, and if you wanted to make it go down, you would just type minus minus. So zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. So you can go either way, but we're gonna want it to go up. So we can delete these print functions. So now we're going to reference the count as the array index. And the array index is basically the position inside the array. So the index of 0 means it's at the first position. And the index of 1 means it's the second position, and so on. Instead of using 0, we're going to do, we're just going to copy this. And we're going to set the texture to the pick in the array position of count. Now we have a way to increment through these images, but the problem is, is that once we get to the end of the array and we try to go further, it's going to throw an error in the logger telling us that we, we don't have anything basically left. The array's done. So what we need to do is we need to add a condition. If it goes to the end of the array, then it needs to go back to zero at the beginning of the array. So we want this to happen after the count increments, but before the base texture is set. So we're going to split these up, and then we're going to type if the count is greater than or equal to the length of the array, which means the number of objects in the array. So that's going to be script.pix.length. So basically it's saying once it gets to that third object, it's going to go back to zero. 
and we're going to do that by adding these brackets and then we're going to set count equal to zero. So now if we do this and we get to the end of the array and we click it again, it's going to go right back to the beginning. So now we have a successful loop and we can just loop through as many things as we want. If we wanted to add another one, let's say we let's just add a new Ralph, we'll just add the same one, but another apple there, another apple, maybe one more of that. So then if we just keep going, then we don't need to keep incrementing and we can just keep going through this whole array. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about scripting from this video. And if you have any suggestions or comments about what you'd like to see next, just go ahead and let me know. Have a good night.